At first, I genuinely thought that I wasn't going to yell at the Bible thumpers. It's not that they didn't deserve to be yelled at. It's more that I thought I'd kind of already dunked on them hard enough, but they kept deserving to be yelled at more and more, and people kept not yelling at them, and eventually I had no choice but to oblige. So let, let, let me back up a little bit. Last month, a listener reached out to me to tell me that they were involved in organizing a pride event in a small town that's about an hour from where I live and asked if I'd like to come. And of course I would. Pride events in small towns in South Georgia need all the support they can get. And it just so happened it was on a Saturday afternoon that I had free anyway. So last weekend, Lucinda and I loaded up. We headed to South Georgia Pride's second annual Music and Arts on Main in Hayhira, Georgia. And of course, we're there for, well, we're, we're actually, we're there for about negative 30 seconds before we're harassed by some asshole Christian giving out y'all are going to burn in hell literature and denouncing everyone there as sinners. There, there's two of them. There's these two guys, both in their 20s, and they're set up at the gate that everybody has to walk through to get to the park where the event is being held. So first I get Beavis, right? As I'm walking up, he sidles up beside me, draws my attention to this pamphlet that just says God is love on the front of it. And I, I guess this is his icebreaker. He's like, hey, hey, can I ask you what you think of the phrase God is love? And I, I laugh a little because I, I should probably come with some kind of FDA warning label or something for these people, but I don't. So I'm just saying, like, well, I think it's silly. Uh, so he's like, can I ask you why you think it's silly? And I answer back. I was like, because love is real and God is imaginary. Uh, but he's undeterred. He says, can I ask you where you think we come from? And I think about it for a second and I say, vaginas. That wasn't on his fucking flow chart. So it threw him off course for just a second. I was really hoping he was going to say, well, where do those vaginas come from? So I could say it's vaginas all the way down, but he didn't. Instead, he says, well, can I ask you where you think we get our morals? And I'm like, you can ask me anything you want, bro. And I walk off. And, and to be honest, I felt pretty good about that interaction. I made fun of him without insulting him. I dismissed him without leaving the impression that I took anything that he was doing remotely seriously. And I distracted him long enough for a couple of people to slip through his fucking bigotry blockade. I, I, I felt like I had done my part. So I headed in. I checked out some booths. So I met some people, took some pictures, supported some local artists, et cetera. Had a great time. South Georgia Pride did an awesome job. But a little later, I found myself back over by the gate and I'm talking with this chick who's giving out little rainbow pins to people as they arrive when fucking butthead decides to cut into the conversation. Now, the chick I'm talking to is trans. So, of course, he misgenders her and she corrects him and he does it again and she corrects him and he does it again. And now he can see that he's getting under her skin. So he starts looking for increasingly awkward ways to insert extra pronouns into his little Jesus spiel just so he can bigot harder. And very quickly, she finds herself at the spot where she's either going to cry or punch that dude in the face or both. And that's when I yelled. Because, of course, she's there representing the group that's putting on the event. She has a certain level of decorum that she has to maintain, but I don't. Me and decorum don't even have to be on speaking terms by the end of the day. So I get to yell. Now, to be honest, I kind of wish somebody had recorded the exchange because I yelled pretty good. I yelled about his, how his stupid fucking book spent more time condemning mixed fibers and shellfish than it did on LGBTQ shit, and yet he didn't feel the need to protest polyester and red lobster. I yelled about how pissed he'd be if South Georgia Pride sent a couple of people to hand out pamphlets about the joys of gay sex at the entrance to his church. I yelled about how there are like fucking three, maybe four days a fucking year when LGBTQ people in Hayhira, Georgia can go out and unapologetically be themselves, and he is robbing them of that. And finally, I, I had to pause long enough to inhale that he got a word in edgewise. And he goes, well, it sounds to me like you're coming from a place of anger. As though that was some kind of fucking rebuttal. But by then I'd taken my breath. I was ready to yell some more. So I told him he was goddamn right. I was coming from a place of anger. And the fact that he's the only one here that isn't angry isn't some kind of fucking sign of rationality or accuracy. It's a sign that the thing everybody else is angry at is him. You're the one taking a giant shit on the sidewalk, dude. The fact that you're the only one who isn't disgusted by that isn't a sign that there's nothing wrong with it. Now, of course, as this is going on, I'm peripherally aware of the big extended cab pickup trucks rolling coal alongside us, screaming slurs and revving engines as they drive by. I see all the middle fingers and Trump flags that just can't pass by a rainbow without screaming at it about how gay they aren't. You know, given the fact that this whole diatribe is LGBTQ themed, I, I kind of want to avoid any comparison to the Dutch boy with his finger in the dike. But I could feel, you know, how feeble my voice was against this avalanche of hatred that it was meant to divert. And I had a, a brief glimpse of what kind of Goliaths the Davids at groups like South Georgia Pride are really up against. 
And by then, uh, of course, I'm, I'm so pissed I can't think anymore. This is why I don't do debates. I, I get legitimately angry and fuck you, QED doesn't go over well in a formal setting. But upon reflection, in the ongoing argument I kept having with that asshole in my head for the rest of the day, I wished I'd added one more point because the whole justification that he used to tell himself at the end of the day that he wasn't just there to be a bigot is that he was trying to save those sinful souls from an eternity of damnation, right? The, the whole premise of his sales pitch was that all the LGBTQ people are bound for hell unless he does something about it. And in a sense, that's true. They are going to hell. But it's the hell that he's making every fucking day. It's the hell that he's constructed by actively trying to rob them of such a fundamental human requirement as pride. It's the hell that he's reinforcing by telling someone that an imaginary being is love, but their relationship with their spouse isn't. It's the hell that he's galvanizing every time he sets aside a whole fucking day to stand out in the sun and remind an oppressed minority that there's no room for them in his conception of paradise. And I wish I'd sent him away with that because even though he wasn't listening to me, he was hearing me. I was too loud not to hear. And I'd like to think that at least some of my tirade was loud enough to echo in his ears a bit after he left. And if I could have left him with any one fucking thing, I'd elect to elect him with a reminder that he was the only devil there that day.